They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky. They're all together hooky, the Adams family. Their house is a museum, when people come to see them, they really are a scream, the Adams family. Neat. Sweet. So get a witch's shawl on, a broomstick you can crawl on, we're gonna pay a call on, the Adams Family. Thank you, Cousin It, for that marvelous introduction. My name is Blair, this is the Blair Book Project. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if you've not been here before, hello, how are you? Today, I'm gonna be doing another book tag. It's the Halloween book tag, so let's get into it. For this book tag, I have my little monster mug to help me out because he's cute and adorable and I love him. Um, please comment down below, below a name for him because I haven't named him yet. He is made from a local artist and I bought him at an art fair and I, I just love him. Look how cute he is. He's so cute. Okay. Okay, let's get into the tag. Question number one. Carving Pumpkins, which book would you cut all up and light on fire? I absolutely hate Happy Doomsday by David Sosnowski. I was gonna read this book for thriller a thon and I didn't get to it and so I read it later and I I couldn't finish it because it was so bad. The first like quarter of this book, because that's all I got through, was not even like development of the story. It was basically just the author using this time to like just shove all of the ideals of a liberal in the face of the reader. And it's not what I came here for, you know? Like I love a book that can make a political message and get behind that. And a lot of the things he said I agreed with, but I don't think the author agrees with them. That's my problem. I think what the author did is researched all the hot topics and what a liberal's ideal would be from that topic and it, and it and he just like took it like one step too far and it was just really infuriating like i wanted to read a story about these three kids that were you know left after the doomsday which by the way he never tells you how it happens even though i didn't finish reading it i read some spoiler reviews and he never mentions it he like maybe a little like orange Oompa Loompa colored president pressed the wrong button when he was tweeting. Like that's not a description of how the world ended. That's just you hating on Trump, which I mean, I'm not defending Trump, but also that's not, I guess, uh, like if you don't even have an idea of how the world ended, how are you going to write a book about the end of the world? You have to have at least decided how the world ended for the world to have ended in your book. I just, I don't, and then, you know, there's this one character, his name is Gay Matt. And it's not even just Matt. He refers to Matt as Gay Matt every single time he talks about him. And Gay Matt sleeps with his best friend, who's not a boy, because they were just tired one night and were like laughing. And then all of a sudden, you know, as one does, they took each other's pants off. And his friend, I don't even remember her name, but she gets pregnant. She wants to get an abortion because she's a teenager and doesn't know how to care for a child. Anyways, so she's pregnant, he's gay. He eventually kills himself. I'm guessing because she tells him that she's pregnant and he doesn't want to deal with it. And so he kills himself. I don't know. It doesn't, ha it doesn't explain it um, in the amount of time that I've spent reading this book. Then there's a character who I guess is the main character. And again, couldn't tell you his name. Don't care enough. Um, he was autistic and again, it feels like this author just researched autism and then just threw symptoms of autism at this character and was like, yeah, now you're autistic. Goody for you. Which I would have, I was pretty like excited for autistic representation in a book and I didn't get at, I didn't get that. I got a person that is, we're being told has these traits that never exhibits these traits and we're supposed to believe that he's autistic. And then the last character is Mo. Mo is Muslim, but he is kind of like, meh, about Islam, but then he starts getting bullied at school and he joins these chat rooms with other Muslim people and they say like, Americans don't understand you, they'll never like you, see they pick on you, you should join our group. What's that group you ask? ISIS. 
because every Muslim person that has ever existed talks to someone in ISIS. I just can't, I just can't with this book. So this author is Islamophobic, makes it so that this teenager is pregnant because apparently people, teenagers just can't keep their legs closed. And also he fat shames her at one point, which, ugh. and then he like makes up traits about an autistic person and then never actually applies those traits to the person. So he's just, this is a dumpster fire of a book and no one should ever read it. And I've been ranting and I'm gonna stop now because I can't anymore. Okay, so I didn't realize that my camera had been falling and the angle had changed. So that was probably a really unfortunate view of my face for a minute there and I apologize, but we're gonna keep moving on because that was just number one, guys. I talked for, what, five minutes about one book? I'm probably gonna trim it down. Anyways. Question number two, trick or treat? Which character is a trick and which character is a treat? For me, a treat would be Blue from the Raven Cycle series. I just really like her. I thought she was really cool. I really like that she was just like a strong person, even if she has her own insecurities. And I really liked that she was a nice person that just wanted to do good and never wanted to hurt anyone. So she's my treat. Trick is Jack from The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. He is evil and I hate him and yeah, he's just evil and I hate him and that's that. Uh, but he does drive the book forward. There wouldn't have been a book without him. So it's kind of hard to hate him too much. I love to hate him. That's what it is. I love to hate him. Question number three, candy corn, a book that is always sweet. I hate candy corn. Can I go just go on record and say I hate candy corn? I think it's gross and I don't understand why it's still candy. Um, but the book that I think is always sweet is A Man Called Ove by Frederick Bachman. I love that book. I think it's so cute and I would read it a million times. So I'm gonna go with A Man Called Ove. Number four is Ghosts. Which character would you want to come back to you as a ghost? I had a tough time with this question because there are just so many questions, so many characters that I would love to come visit me and I would love to hang out with. I think for a ghost, I would probably go with Vinicius from The Air You Breathe because he's like a chill dude and I feel like he would be a chill ghost. And then he would just probably pay, play music the whole time he was like, we were hanging out and I think that would be a chill time. So I'm gonna go with Vinicius. I think he'd be a cool character to hang out with. Okay, question number five, dressing up in costume. Which character would you like to be for a day? This was another one that took me a while to come up with, but I thought of Hercule Poirot from any Agatha Christie novel that he's in because I would love to be able to solve crimes the way that he does, just like pick up on all the small things. So yeah, I would go with him. Okay, number six, wizards and witches. What is your favorite Harry Potter moment? Um, All of it, can I say all of it? because all of it, because I love Harry Potter. Um, but if I can't pick all of it, I'm gonna go ahead and pick any moment with Hagrid because he's really cool. I think maybe my favorite time with Hagrid is when he first tells Harry that he's a wizard because he comes in and he doesn't take anything, take any crap from Vernon Dursley and he's like, you're a wizard, Harry. Like he's just, he's so kind and nurturing and loving towards Harry and then to Vernon, he's like, you ain't shit, boo. Like, <laughs> he doesn't put up with anything from Vernon, so. I just thought that was a really fun and cute moment. So I'd probably pick that one with Hagrid, but he's my favorite, I love him. Okay, question number seven, blood and gore. What book was so creepy that you had to take a break from it for a while? Honey wanted to join me, so she's here. I think for me, that would be that would be The Outsider by Stephen King. There's a certain scene where they describe the murder of the boy that's kind of the whole book is based around. And it was just a little much to take in. And I, uh, I had to stop reading for a while because I, it just hurt my soul. It was so, so depressing. So yeah, that would be the one that I, I had to take a, take a second and stop reading for a bit because it was just a little too much for me. Okay, so now I guess I have to tag some people. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tag. I'm gonna tag my friend Kazan over at Always Doing. I'm gonna tag Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book and I'm gonna tag RK Gold from RK Gold. So guys, if you are watching this video, I tag you, have a lot of fun with it, um, and yeah, go do it. If you liked this video, please hit me with a thumbs up, uh, comment down below any of the books that you would have picked for this 
questionnaire if you've read any of the books that I picked and if you liked them or not. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you. Everyone, have a great day. I love all of your faces. Goodbye. Like to see something strange Come with us and you will see